I love living where we live right now, here at home in Dineta. There's just so much tied to the land with our family and everything. That I don't, I can't picture myself living long term anywhere else. Weaving has always fascinated me since I was a kid. My paternal grandmother, she wove, and I always just thought it was super cool seeing her take wool and turn it into a beautiful big rug. She used to really stress that when you weave, you should only put good thoughts into it because those good thoughts carry on to the people that receive your art. By the time I got pregnant with Naomi, we were living in Chandler. I didn't know she was going to be born with a bilateral cleft lip palate. Um, we didn't see it in any of the x-rays. My doctor wasn't aware of it. They lifted her up and put her on my chest and I was stroking her head and she went sideways and that's when I I saw that, you know, her, her uh, there was a, a little bump right here underneath her, where her nose should be. I was just, what happened? Like, what, is it something I did? That was the question. This is a very devastating diagnosis for families, for all families. And they very commonly know nothing about cleft lip and palate, and so it is devastating in that regard. Um, and they begin very quickly to learn that the care timeline is really quite long. I met Naomi Glasses as a baby. Uh, she was born with a complete uh, cleft of the lip and palate on both sides, so a bilateral cleft lip and palate. The repair of a cleft lip and palate can transform a child's life from one of being ostracized to one of being accepted and considered to be normal. When I was five, I went to preschool. Then this new girl came in and then, uh, she asked me like, why do you look like that? Why are you so ugly? And like, I had never been, like I had never experienced anything like that. I just knew that I had a bilateral cleft lip and palate. She came in and she came up to me and she told me this little girl was really mean to me and told me what the little girl said. And so I just asked her, well, what did you say? You know, and she said, I just told her what Dr. Bill tells me to tell people, you know, that I was born this way and there's nothing wrong with me. I remember though, I, after I talked to her about it, I went to the room and I cried because I just remember thinking, God, how is he so strong? I guess you would call, I would call myself a weaver and a designer. I always liked to draw when I was a lot younger, but then I just, uh, I found weaving and I just fell completely in love. I think for a lot of us kids who were born differently, like, or well, what the world considers differently, it's like, it's tough, but it adds so much more resilience and strength to us. It really forms who we are. When Naomi was younger, we lived, we lived in the Valley in Phoenix. So she had every doctor available to her for any care she needed. When she was 12, we moved home here to Navajo and immediately found out that that was not how it was for all kids. There was not a team dedicated to help me with her. And so after finding that really difficult and trying to navigate through that for like a month or two, we just called Dr. Bills back up. And from then on, uh, they reassembled the whole team for us. It's still a challenge for the kids on the Navajo Nation to, to get good cleft care. And just the transportation sometimes is very challenging and uh, makes for a very long and arduous uh, doctor's appointment to have to go five or six hours each direction. So it can be very challenging for them to have their care and it just puts some, some added burden on the family. We got really good at one day trips. <laughs> we would uh, take off like at four o'clock in the morning, get to our appointments by 10, 11, and then we just get back on the road, be home by like around 10, midnight, somewhere around there. You just kind of get used to it. Like it's something you have to do if you want to get the care. 
I know other families have told us that they had to stop care, like once the, the basics got done, and then after that they kind of just stopped. They don't do the therapy, they don't do the follow-ups because of travel. We started to meet other kids with cleft lip palate issues here on Navajo when Naomi and I would be out and about. So that's how her uh, advocacy began, is just meeting people. I know quite a few children born with a cleft lip and palate. There's one in particular that I see often at Herd Market because she's another artist's child in Phoenix. Every time I see her, I just remind her how beautiful she is. Najoni's like super brave. Every time we go to the art show, she knows that she's gonna go, you know, find Naomi and talk to her and say hi. And I think that it just, gives her a community and helps her see that everything's gonna be fine. The Cleft and Cranial Facial Center really just have walked us through every step. Sometimes I have to like miss school to go to the orthodontics or my braces or my expander. My expander is like, it doesn't really feel like anything but like a little thing in your mouth. You know, she's eight and she's got braces and headgear and surgeries and things that most eight-year-olds don't necessarily have to deal with. Next month, she'll go for her bone graft surgery. And what are they gonna do? Dr. Ling is gonna do a bone graft with my hip and my, like, mouth area. I feel kind of scared and, like, I want it to like go like quick. What do you get to eat a lot of after surgery? Ice cream. And boba. I've been able to design floor rugs, blankets, and now clothing with Polo Ralph Lauren. My mom, my dad, my brother, and my late sister were like the biggest cheerleaders in my life and told me I could do anything and so I think that's really helped and I feel like I can enter spaces that someone that typically looks like me wouldn't feel brave enough to enter. With the second release of the Polo Ralph Lauren and Naomi Glasses collaboration, I'm so grateful that we were able to donate a portion of the proceeds to Phoenix Children's Foundation. I believe that philanthropy creates a world where we have the ability to take care of the entire individual. The Cleft and Cranial Facial Center, it's really important to us. And when we drive down Thomas Road, Nijoni's like, that's my hospital. That's where I had my surgery. That's, that's where I go. It means a lot. I just think it's really important to have the representation that I wanted to see as a kid because if I had seen someone like me going out there doing these things as a kid, I think it would have given me even more confidence to feel accepted.